Anderson family. I don't see how you think this juvenile delinquency problem affects Junior. I didn't say it did now. But boys need supervision. The kids in the Gargoyle Club are all nice, Pop. I didn't say they weren't. Then why do you want to supervise them? Just to help. It's a father's job. Well, according to that reasoning, a boy can't think. I didn't say that. Uh-oh, here we go again, folks. <laughs> Now let's visit the Anderson family. This whole thing started when Oliver Anderson's boss, Mr. Thompson, showed Oliver Anderson the statistics on juvenile delinquency. Oliver isn't too impressed because he's never had any unusual trouble with Junior, but the boss wants to be heard on the subject. But you can't turn your back on this problem, Anderson. You have a son. Oh, but he's not a delinquent. I didn't say he was, but he easily could be. Could be? That's silly. All right, all right. Take Joan's son. Nice young chap, smart in school, got in with the wrong boys, landed in jail. His father fired, the family ruined. Just because old man Jones thought it couldn't happen here. But Junior's different. Different? Why, Anderson, you can hear that same line every morning in the juvenile court. They're all good boys, according to their attorney. Ah, that's silly. All right, let me ask you. How much time have you given your son lately? How much do you fraternize with him? How much do you join in his daily routine? Well, of course, I have to work, too, mm -hmm. you know. That's what I thought. Why don't you go home and show him his father's a great guy, even if you have to lie about yourself. Lie, huh? Well, that's a good idea. Then he'll I... respect you and live the clean life. Well, Junior doesn't smoke, that I know of, and he doesn't stay out late at night, I hope. There, you see. Just as I said, a father feels pretty well satisfied if his 12-year-old boy doesn't smoke, shoot craps, and stay out late at night. Well, I can save a lot of time by agreeing with you. Don't agree with me! Just remember what I said to you. Someday when Junior is asking you to bring ice cream cones to his cell. Mary? Yes? Where's Junior? Of uh, Junior? I don't know. You don't know? Well, I mean, right at this minute, he's probably delivering his papers. Why? Nothing. But the boss has me sort of worried talking about juvenile delinquency. Worried? Why? Junior seems to be a normal person. Yeah, but I don't give him enough attention. He needs supervision. Why this sudden interest in your son? Uh, do you know the statistics on juvenile delinquency? No, I can't say that I do. Mr. Thompson does. Hmm. Did Mr. Thompson think Junior was going to the dogs? He didn't say that. Mm, he must have implied it. He says the whole structure of family life is being ruined. So there. How many children does Mr. Thompson have? Children? Uh, why, he doesn't have any. That's what I thought. But he's going to tell everyone else how to bring up their children. He's doing no such thing. Well, do you have any ideas? Well, not at the minute. It would take some thought, of course. Uh, maybe if Junior took up the subject of vitamins or something in the chemistry line, I could help him with it. And then he wouldn't feel he was growing up in ignorance. Well, you know how to handle Junior. All you have to do is talk to him, man to man. He's willing to learn. If a father would just stop and take the time to explain things. A child can't be expected to know the things his father does. What's that? Sounds like Junior. Of course it's Junior. Hurry up and wash, Junior. Your father wants to eat. Oh, sure. Hi, Pop. Hello, son. Better sit down so we can eat. I asked him to wash his hands, Oliver. Talk to him afterwards. Gee, now I'm confused. Face washed or sit down? Right in and get your hands and face washed. Okay, Mom. Too bad, Pop. I couldn't help it. Uh, that's another thing, boss said. No security. You tell him one thing and I tell him another. Talk to him at the table, darling. He's more at ease. Well, I 
guess we're just about ready. Now, let me handle this, Mary. He expects me to be firm. All right, but don't nag him, all of us. Nag him? Of course not. Now, don't coddle him. Just have to be firm. Mm. There, there we are. Gee, Pop, you're looking on a beam tonight. Had a haircut, didn't you? Why, uh, yes. You, uh, like it? Gee, I'll say I do. When I'm grown, that's the way I'm going to have my hair cut, if I have as little hair as you have. Mm -hmm. Potatoes, Junior? Sure, thanks, Mom. Potatoes are good for you, Junior. I'm glad you eat them. I know it. They have starch in them. Why, uh, yes. Potatoes and bread. Bread's especially good now, isn't it, Pop? With that added river flavor and nicotinic acid. With, uh, uh what? Uh, you know, Oliver, a flavor, uh, a rabbit, a uh, river flavor. I guess Pop wasn't listening to me. All I do is chatter. Oh, no, I wouldn't say that, Junior. You're a smart little guy. Anytime you have anything to say that's important, you just say it. You mean that if you're right, go ahead stuff, huh, Pop? Well, uh, <clears throat> on that order, yes. Uh, could I interest you in some spinach, son? Spinach? I oh, ask, Mom, thanks. Although spinach is somewhat oversold, don't you think so, Pop? Well, I, I hadn't given it any thought, Junior. All I know is it's full of vitamin D. Vitamin D? You're thinking of fish oil, Pop. Mm. Spinach has iron in it. Have some spinach, Pop. Me? Oh, uh... Well, yes, I'll take a little. Junior, uh, let Mother ask you something. Are all the boys nice in the gargoyle club? Oh, sure, they have to be, Mom. We'd blackball them out if they aren't. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Now, I have a surprise for you, Junior. Oh, good. You gonna get my bike fixed? Uh, uh, no, not yet. But I'm gonna start a hobby for you, something to keep your mind occupied. Oh, gee, Pop, we just started one this afternoon at the gargoyle club. Voted in the captain and everything. Well, this won't interfere with what you've planned. I'm going to get you an indoor bat and a ball. Gee, that's swell. I was going to ask for one. That's what we've organized, an indoor team, a gargoyle giants. Oh, oh, you've uh, already started it, huh? Well, uh, that, that's fine. Get all the boys together as soon as you can, and we'll have a meeting. We'll get eight gloves and eight bats. Eight? Sure, a bat for each player on the team. Eight? Gee, we must be playing it all wrong. Well, no, there are different ways to play it, maybe. Now, right after dinner, you get the kids together, and we'll all chip in a dollar. A dollar? Gee, Pop, I don't think the kids will go for a clip like that. It's not a clip. If they pay for things, it makes them appreciate them more. Well, why don't you try to cooperate with your father, Junior? I am, Mom. But I know how the other kids feel. Now, just let me handle them. Now, if you're finished, round them up, and we'll have a meeting. Okay. Uh, I mean, yes, sir. Uh, Oliver! Hey, Oliver! Wait a minute, wait a minute! Huh? Yeah, yeah. What is it, Homer? Uh, what's all them kids doing in that field across from me, huh? Well, Homer, I'm licking the juvenile problem in the neighborhood. Oh, uh, you know they ain't allowed to play ball that lot. Who says so? Well, well, Mr. Parker, owner, he won't allow it. No, sir. He put up a big no trespass sign on it. It's not there now, bub. I pulled it up and threw it in the ditch. Oh, Oliver, he ain't going to like it. Oh, no? Well, it'll keep him off the streets anyway. Well, another thing, Oliver. When them kids hit a ball... Hits my house. Okay, it hits your house. No damage. Uh, that's why we stopped him from playing there. Now, look, Homer. Just imagine you're a kid. Uh, Would you like old man Meister if he was a crab? Oh, well, well, no, no, I guess I wouldn't, but... Uh, Down deep in your heart, you like kids. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, yes, I do. But when they break a window, I, I just... And you'd a... be the last one to stop him from being fine, clean boys. Uh, well, well, yes, I would, Oliver. Gosh, I guess I've been a pretty hard man. Uh, I was just doing it to keep Marthy from arguing with me. I knew uh, you'd see it my way. Yeah, Marthy's good woman. Yeah. Yep, yep. Well, I guess I've been a tired, Oliver. But I see what you mean. Them boys got to have a place to play. Yeah. Well, sir, uh, it takes me back to the days when I was a boy. Had ourselves a right smart team, I remember. One day we was playing, bases was loaded. I come to bat, the pitcher threw, I swung. Uh... Hmm. Martha must have dropped the fishbowl. Fishbowl be darned. That was my front window. Okay, okay, so it's your front window. Can I help it if the wind's blowing that way? Now, look here. Every one of you kids get and get past now. Go on, get out. Leave them alone. I'll pay for the window. Uh, this is all you're doing, Oliver Anderson. Now get them darn kids out of here. Go on, get What on earth were you and Homer yelling about? Why, uh, nothing. Why? That's your racket. What'll the neighbors think? Kids did that. They'd want to send them to the juvenile home. Oh, uh, a ball went through Homer's window, but I'll pay for it. Through the Meister window? Oh, Oliver. That's all right. It was cracked anyhow. Well, why don't you drop this whole thing, Oliver? I have too good a start now, Mary. 
The kids all seemed to be happy about it. What did they say? Why, uh, well, they didn't say anything. I just told them about the deal, and that's that. A couple of them paid their dollar, too. Do you think we ought to tell the other parents what you're doing? Why? They should feel happy that I take such interest in their boy. Well, what about Homer? Oh, he would have been mad about something anyhow. He'll be happy with a new window. Yes, Mary, that's just what those kids needed. Supervision. Well, you're getting results already. I'll get it, darling. Maybe another kid with a dollar. Yes? Is Mr. Anderson home? Why, uh, yes. Won't you come in? My name is Chapman. Oh, oh yeah, Chapman the plumber. My yeah. name is Anderson. Sit down, have a cigar. I just talked with your boy a while ago. That's what I want to see you about. Did you ask him to bring you a dollar? Why, uh, uh yes. Yeah, I, uh... then it's true. I thought he was lying to me. Why didn't you go to the Red Cross or the community fund if you needed dough that bad? Now, wait a minute. Oh, I'm sure you'll understand when all of us... If play... you'd have come to me like a man, I'd have let you have a couple of bucks for a week or so. I won't see nobody go hungry. I didn't need the money for food. I was just buying a bat and ball with it. Oh, I see. Let your family starve while you hang around with a bunch of kids and putting a B on them for spending money. Now, look here, Mr. Chapman. Mr. Anderson is collecting from several boys. From he... several of them, huh? Say, this is worse than I thought. A kid ain't safe in this Now, 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 look here, Mr. Chapman. I don't need money so desperately that I take it from children. I... Oh, I see. You don't need the dough. It's just a hobby, eh? And they talk about a juvenile crime wave. Brother, I've met some dandies in my time, but... If that's all you have to say, Mr. Chapman, you may leave. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I, uh, I never believed in causing a man trouble in his own home. But, brother, there ain't nothing to keep me from catching up with you when you step off your land. And now back to The Anderson Family. Oliver's idea to organize a boys' indoor team seemed to have bumped into a snag, a snag by the name of Mr. Chapman, who, by the way, is still hanging around the Anderson home, hoping Oliver will come out. The trouble started when Oliver asked one dollar each from the boys to buy the equipment. It seems that some of the parents misunderstood this. Well, here are Mary and Oliver again. Outside of Mr. Chapman, things seem to be going along all right, Oliver. I hear the boys playing out there. Look. Why don't you go out and explain to Mr. Chapman? Explain to him? He won't hold still for anything. I tried to explain to him in here, and you heard how he acted. Well, don't worry. I want you to go to the store for me anyhow. Sure, I'll... Uh, to the store? Mm-hmm. Now, now, wait a minute. I don't know where this Chapman is, and I'm not looking for trouble. Oh, well, I'll run over myself. I'll see what the boys are doing when I go by. Maybe I should go out and have it out for Chapman. Oh, now what? Maybe it's Junior. How do you do? Something? Can I help you? You most certainly can. Let me in. Now, now look here. Don't please. lady me, you, you fagin. Please, close the door. And be alone with you in here? Not me. Well, what's wrong? Has Junior done something? Did Junior do something? Don't change the subject, you, you delinquent. Now, 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 wait a minute. I don't even know what you're talking you about. You know what I'm talking about. My little Albert, don't lie. I never met your little Albert. I don't even know who he is. Don't know him? He's the boy with the yellow sweater that you slapped down and grabbed a dollar out of his hand and ran. Why, why he's telling a falsehood. I never did. Don't deny it. Little Albert wouldn't lie. I sent him to the grocery store for some groceries, and you waylaid him and took it away from him, and he had to charge the groceries, now, and now, I... Now, now, look. Wait a minute. You're entirely wrong. It was just a little deal I had with the boys. Here. Here's the dollar. It ain't the money. It's the cruelty. Here, take this dollar. Take two of them. I can't afford a scene like this in my front door. You take advantage of a widow, but money won't buy the heartache you're causing me. I'm sorry. Excuse me. What is it, Homer? Oh, nothing. I heard what the lady said. You, 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 you fagin. I don't even know the lady. Don't even know me, he says. You know, Albert. And I'm going to the police with this. Huh? Maybe I can save some other poor innocent woman this misery. Oh, the poor woman. Well, there she goes. Hey, wait a minute, Homer. Nope, nope. Heard it with my own ears. Okay, bring back my hammer you borrowed. Oh, yeah? Well, then, you'll bring back my wheelbarrow, you, you, you. Fine thing. If Homer tells Martha, Martha will tell the whole neighborhood. Who's that coming in the back? Is it Chapman? There we are, Oliver. Not Aspen for a week. Why, Oliver, you're ill. You're white as a sheet. I am? Well, if you'd been through what I've been through. Pa! Hey, Pa! Quit 
screaming. Pop, that Mr. Chapman is over there in the ball field, and he has the bats and balls in his arms, and he won't let us play with them. He says he's taking care of them. Oh, huh? he is, is he? What right is he to touch them? The kids are waiting, Pop. I told him you'd come over and handle it. Me? Um, uh, why, uh, you go back and tell that Chapman that I'll give him just 45 minutes to give those things back to you. 45 minutes? Jeepers, Pop, it'll be dark by that time. Yes, your father knows that. Huh? Now, run out and get your old bat and ball and let Mr. Chapman have the new ones. Okay, Mom, but the kids won't like this. Well, I tried to talk you into letting the boys handle their own problems, Oliver. Now this. Um, I ought to go out there right now and settle this with Chapman. But I won't. <laughs> Maybe we better call Junior. It's getting dark, dear. Yeah. Hmm. You know something? Hmm? I haven't heard a sound from that field for half an hour. Wonder where the boys went. I'll uh, look out the window. Hmm. Don't see a soul out there. Is Chapman out there? No. Nobody. That's funny. Junior would have certainly come home if there were trouble. You don't think he's easily led? Oh, you don't mean that at all, Oliver. You're upset. Hmm. I'll get it, dear. You take a couple more aspirins. Yes? Uh, Mrs. Anderson? Why, yes. Uh, this is Chief O'Reilly down at headquarters. Uh, you better come down and pick up your boy. Pick up my boy? What's wrong, Mary? Yeah, I, uh, I had to go out and pick up the whole bunch of them. The fellow that owns a lot put in a complaint. Oh, no, he wouldn't do that. Oh, what's Junior done, Mary? Oh, I knew it. Oh, we'll be right down, Chief. Keep him there. Mary, what's happened? Get your coat, Oliver. Hurry. Junior's in jail. Where is he, Chief O'Reilly? Where's Junior? No, no, just take it easy, Mrs. Anderson. He's, he's okay. I'd like to know what right the police have in taking in a group of boys who aren't bothering anyone. If you'll just keep your shirt on, Anderson. Mm. Now, uh... A fellow by the name of Parker said these boys was trespassing on his land, and he signed a complaint. Said they deliberately threw away a sign. Now, of course, that's, that's wanton destruction. All I could do was take the kids in. After all, the law is the law. You mean you put those little boys in a cell? <laughs> Me with boys of my own? <laughs> now, Mrs. Anderson, they're on their uh, third soda right about now. Third soda? Sure, over at the ice cream parlor. Mm. And the lieutenant is trying to talk Mr. Parker out of the complaint right this minute. Mm. But we, we sure put that uh, ringleader on ice, resisting two officers. Ringleader? Yeah, a fellow by the name of Chapman. He wanted to get tough. Well, there must be some mistake. No, no, no mistake. No, the, uh, the officers found this Chapman with the balls and the bats in his arms, said they were his, and he started to get tough. Got tough with you, too, huh? Look, uh, Chief. Mr. Chapman isn't to blame. It was Mr. Anderson's idea. Uh, Anderson's? Yes, he wanted to help the boys organize a boys' club. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, that's different. Uh, wait till I get this Chapman in here. Uh, send in Chapman. This is a terrible thing to have happened. Well, it always happens when children don't have supervision at home. I was supervising them. Well, that's funny. No one saw you around there. Well, uh, I was... Uh, 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 you know, busy. Anderson... Uh, Parker wasn't mad about the boys playing on that lot, but, uh, when they caused destruction by pulling up a no trespassing sign and deliberately threw it in the ditch, well, that was the last straw. Oh, oh, the sign, yeah. huh? Oh, yes. Uh, come in, Chapman. I see you got the ringleader, Chief. I hope he rots in jail. Making a jailbird out of my son. Stealing money from kids. Now, now, wait a minute, Chapman. I was just trying to help. No wonder there's inflation. Even a kid's dollar ain't safe. Mr. Chapman, we didn't need his No, dollar. no, ho, hold on a minute here. Now, Chapman, this fellow here, was merely trying to help out on the juvenile problem. Why does it cost a kid a dollar to join? Keep quiet or back in the tank you go. Now, Anderson here had a great idea. Just, just hit a couple of snags, that's all. But I, I'm going to publicize this thing. It's a great idea. Oh, no, 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 wait, Chief. My boss told me this thing would happen. I'm a dead duck if he hears of this. Well, wait, wait a minute. You, Chapman, now... Try to realize the benefits and, and help Anderson instead of pulling the other way. Well, uh, that's different. I, uh, I didn't know he was doing it for good. And, uh, well, I'm, I'm the kind of guy who apologizes when he's wrong. Uh, shake, Anderson. 
I'm a bum. Oh, now, Mr. Chapman. Uh, yeah, yes, I am. Uh, maybe we can work this out together. We sure can. Uh, well, what, what they need is, is supervising. Yeah, well, uh, well then I, I guess there's nothing to keep any of you here any longer. Old man Parker isn't a bad guy, so uh, go pick up the boys and, uh, and get them off the streets. Yeah, yeah, but the boss is... Uh, well, uh, give me his phone number. I'll call him and square the whole thing. Don't, don't worry about a thing. Well, then we'd better get the boys, dear. Yeah, thanks a million, Chief. Okay, gentlemen, just get along together. Get along? <laughs> oh, well, of course. Well, I'll show you what I think of a dollar, Chapman. I'll pay for their sodas. Oh, no, you don't, jerk. Uh, I mean Anderson. I'm, uh, I'm paying for them. Want to make something out of it? Huh? <laughs> well, I'm certainly glad this day is over. Yeah, I've never been so misunderstood. Is that you, Junior? Yes, Mom. Where are you going, Junior? Oh, I think I'll go up to bed, Pop. Oh, come here a minute. Tell us what happened at the gargoyle meeting. I'll tell you tomorrow. I'm tired. I won't be here tomorrow. I want to know. Come in here a minute. Oh, gee, Pop, it isn't that pressing, is it? Now, hold up your head, Junior. Why, Junior, your eye, it's black. Yeah, and it hurts, too. What on earth happened? Oh, nothing. I was just outvoted at the club is all. Oh, my goodness, let me get something for your eye. Now, now, now wait a minute. What happened to you, Junior? Tell me. I'm always with you on everything. Well, the kids wanted to run their own club, and I tried to swing them over to you, but it wouldn't work. Oh, I see. Well, uh, how did the eye get puffed up? Oh, it was that Chapman kid. Said his pa had you scared to go out of the house. Oh, he did, huh? They can't say that about you, Pop. Even oh. if it is true. Oh, well, go on now. You were saying... Here, Junior. Put this ice on your eye. I'll get it, Mary. All right. Yes? Oliver Anderson speaking. Hi, buddy. This is Chapman speaking. My uh, kid just told me he punched Junior in the eye. Uh, I talked to Junior. Junior? Oh, uh, I, uh, yes. Junior? Phone. For me? Oh, swell. Who is it, Pop? Here. Take it. Thanks. Hello, this is Junior. Oh, well, hello, Junior. This is Spike's old man. Oh, hi, Mr. Chapman. Look, uh, Spike feels lousy about punching you in the eye. Oh, that's all right. I had the same chance to do it to him. Well, he said he was sorry to disagree with you, but I learned him that a gentleman never shoots off his mouth. Ah, uh, that's okay, Mr. Chapman. I feel the same way Spike does about it. Well, you and Spike get together tomorrow. You know, he thinks you're hunky-dory. And uh, so's your old man. Well, so long now. Yeah, so long. And tell Spike it's okay. See him tomorrow. Is everything all right, Junior? Yeah, everything's keen now. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Junior. I'll have to get right in and pitch now. Well, uh, say, Pop, there's something I ought to tell you about our meeting tonight. Something wrong, Junior? No, I, I just wanted to tell Pop, before he makes any new plans, the Gargoyle Club membership passed a resolution tonight. No more outside interference. But don't feel too bad, Pop. No, uh, outside interference. That's huh? right. They said every time grown people step in and try to take over, there's always a lot of trouble. <laughs> Probably Chapman again. I'll get it, Mary. Oliver Anderson speaking. Oh, uh, Anderson, my boy. I just couldn't wait to call you and offer my congratulations. Uh, uh, con congratulations? Now, now, wait, boss. Uh, I... Yes, Chief O'Reilly just called me and told me of your wonderful new idea on handling the juvenile problem. I'm very much surprised. So am I. The wife has an article to do on child psychology for the Beekeeper's Journal. Uh, 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 could you help her a bit on the article? Well, uh... Mr. Thompson, from my experience with the juvenile problem, I have found there is one thing of a paramount importance. Uh, yes, yes. That sounds excellent. Uh, go on, Anderson. It can all be summed up by saying, intelligent handling of the juvenile problem can best be brought out by the parents showing less outside interference and more inside information. And, brother, you can quote Oliver Anderson on that. <laughs>
Anderson Family is written by Howard Swart, directed by Herb Litton, and features Dick Lane as Oliver, Louise Arthur as Mary, Walter Tetley as Junior, and Herbert Rollinson as Homer. Others in the cast were Paul Theodore, Jackie DeWitt, and Doug Young. Music by Gordon Kibbe, sound effects by Ray Erlenborn, and your announcer is Ken Peters. The Anderson Family is a Hollywood Broadcasters production, transcribed from Hollywood.